Hey, what's going on, everybody? Aaron Zamzo here with the FRF podcast, Fire Rescue Fitness. That's where you can find me, firerescuefitness.com. Today, I wanted to talk about some getting back to basics. Uh, this is something that if you are stuck, you don't know where to begin, if you've you know tried to make some progress and uh, you're just getting frustrated, this is the, the, the podcast to listen to. I do this a couple times a year, at least on this topic, and I want to relate it back to you know, my, my new passion, my new push, which is the healthy 10. And let's relate those two together. Okay. So a lot of times, you know, this time of the year, I've been working with, uh, in the fitness industry for over 30 years. And, uh, I typically see right around, you know, a couple months into the end of the year or a couple months into someone's program, usually about two months, eight weeks, six to eight weeks, they, they start to fall off a little bit. You know, life starts to happen. Maybe they lose track a little bit. They got a couple of social events, maybe a vacation. Next thing you know, they missed a couple of weeks and their their nutrition has got off, off track. The Healthy 10 is really a, uh, a template for your health throughout your career. And so what you need to do is uh, get back to basics. And the first thing you need to realize, and I, I this is kind of spurred on from um, a couple of questions that I've been getting lately. And so... I'll, I'll, this is kind of a Q and a, and also a little motivation for you and, um, you know, a, a map and a framework for success, fitness, success, uh, being more healthy. So the questions that I've been getting is, Hey, I, I'm at, you know, over 300 pounds. Where do I begin? You know, or I'm just stuck. I've been kind of going in and out of the gym. What, what do I do? Um, it's common. You're not alone. First of all, that's the first thing you need to realize is, Hey, it happens to everybody. Look, I talk about this stuff, talk probably way more than you want me to, because I'm on a lot of different podcasts and stuff lately. Uh, but, um, you know, I, I struggle with it as well. I, you know, tonight I, I didn't get my workout until late, which is why I'm doing this podcast late. But the point being is I did it. You're not alone. And here's the other part. Look, folks, it's not easy. It's not easy staying consistent with fitness. Uh, you have to find stuff that works for you and, and, you know, not saying that, that you should give up. That's the last thing you need to do, but you also have to understand and give yourself a little bit of, of, of a break when, Hey, okay, I missed one workout. Fine. Two workouts that happens three. Hey, let's make some changes here and make sure that that doesn't turn into three years. And so you're not alone. It is difficult. Let's get that out on the table right away. Uh, even, you know, people that talk about this all the time, like myself, I struggle with it, staying consistent. You know, I go through some moments where I like to crush some certain foods and, you know, I like tequila. So anyways, what happens when you start going down kind of, uh, you know, this, this path where, Hey, shoot, my fitness is getting away from me. My nutrition's getting away with me. You go right back to basics. This is also kind of, uh, been spurred on, and I say spurred a lot. I don't know what, basically it's the, my motivation behind getting this is doing this particular podcast is I was talking to a buddy of mine who was coaching his kid's basketball team and they went like two for 11 on free throws. And, um, you know, it's all about basics, whether you're a pro athlete or, you know, a kid or, you know, a firefighter trying to, to, uh, you know, get healthy again, it's back to the fundamentals. And I think sometimes when we lose our path, we, we start to get into our own head about, Oh my God, I need more protein and I shouldn't be eating this and I should be eating that. And I need to be working out 90 minutes a day. And, uh, and, and all of a sudden we get into our own head. We just, we don't do anything then. And we, we kind of, you know, paralyze ourselves. So let's talk about the basics and, and let's relate them back to the healthy 10. And, you know, for somebody who's just beginning, let's say you're 300 pounds, your joints are killing you. You can't really move a lot. You know, what do you do? Uh, the first thing you need to do is set your goal. Just say, hey, uh, my recommendation is don't even worry about weight loss. Get feeling better. Uh, get moving. So set a goal to, hey, I'm going to do some activity, physical activity, 30 minutes, whether that's just walking or, uh, you know, around the room, walking at the house, doing something, moving for 30 minutes, three times a week. And then, you know, set that for the first month. Maybe your first month is 12 workouts. And, and just get moving. I personally, when I, when someone comes to me, they're like, I am so sore. I, my knees ache, my back aches. Where do I begin? I, I begin with active mobility stuff. So having them, you know, get on the floor and just stand back up two or three, four times, and then do a, you know, simple knees side to side to loosen up their back. 
uh, do some hip mobility stuff because a lot of times our knees are hurting and our backs hurt because our hips are so tight because we have that excess weight. Uh, so just start with, you know, three basic active movements and then go for a, a 15, 20 minute, 30 minute walk, ride something low impact and just start that way. And then, you know, maybe the next month you start adding a little bit of resistance training. And before you know it, you start getting this ball rolling where you're, you're going in the right direction. Now take somebody who's been more advanced and you're trying to, you know, maybe add some muscle or you're trying to, um, you know, improve your performance, uh, get back to the basics of working out consistently, you know, make sure your workouts have active movement, core, uh, work in it. And, uh, I like full body because, because you know, if one of the problems is getting, you know, more than three or four workouts in, in a, in a week, then why are you doing body part training? Do full body each time and you can really get more bang for your buck. You can also burn more calories that way, especially if you're doing fat loss, full body, unless you're working out five, six times a week consistently, I would stay with a full body workout and then finish with some fire ground movement stuff, crawls, carries, drags, climbs, steps, stretch it out. And then make sure you have a recovery day in there and, you know, stay moving and stay on this consistent path for working out. Right. So first things first, you set this goal. I need to get more healthy. I need to get more, uh, you know, in better shape for my crew, for my family, for my life. So I like to dig deep and I, I kind of skipped over this set your goal, but I like to dig deep. Hey, I want to get back in that uniform. I want to fit in those jeans. I want to fit in those pants. I got my daughter's wedding coming up. I want to be, you know, 30 or 40 pounds lighter. Now, take that final goal and then break it down. All right. In order to get to that 30 pounds, if I haven't been working out and sitting my ass on the couch or the, in the recliner, what do I need to do? Well, I need to start working out and moving. So let's just start with that, that goal to lead me to the 30 pounds. And I wouldn't even say don't even, like I said, focus on creating the habits first. That's the bottom of your pyramid. That's the basics. And the other thing with, with, um, you know, the basics is you got to be honest with yourself when you start, you know, have that come to Jesus moment where you're like, oh shoot, I'm a heart attack waiting to happen. I'm that guy on my crew. Uh, I might let my family down with my health. So, you know, really dig deep. Here's my longer term goal. Break it down. Shorter term goal. What is the habit that's going to get you to that goal? Next start moving on that goal. So we had mentioned 12 workouts for a month, 24 for two months, 30 minutes, active movement, then start incorporating core, then start incorporating some strength in there. And, um, you know, I got a program for you if you want it. It's free. You can just start with those active movements that are in that program. I'll try to leave that in the show notes here, uh, fire rescue fitness, or you can contact me through the website. The third thing I put on here because it's a really easy start point for nutrition, right? You got to talk about nutrition when you're talking about trying to make fitness goals. Hydrate folks with water, with water. Try to get those sodas out of your diet. Try to get those energy drinks out of your diet. Coffee's all right, but just watch what you throw into it. Teas are great, but if you're adding 10 gallons of sugar, or I don't so many grams of sugar, you know, you're, you're not doing yourself any justice. So hydrate with water. Try to aim for half your body weight in ounces. I know you're like, holy cow, Zan, that's a lot. I know. Get close to it. What, what will happen if you hydrate? Why do, I, why do I, I preach hydration? A, hydration is used with digestion. B, hydration will help lubricate the joints. Hydration helps um, you feel more full so you're not, you don't have cravings. It helps with energy. It actually can also reduce sudden cardiac arrest and helps with cognitive function. So Hydrating is a easy thing to do, number one, with water. And number two, it, for the bang for the buck, it, it goes a long way. It can really help with a lot of different processes. So you set your goal, you're going to start moving more. You start drinking more water, all right? And that might be it for the first month. Start removing, and then part of that is remove some of these sodas. So if you're doing lots of diet sodas and you're doing lots of energy drinks, just start cutting them down to a point where you know, one every once in a while is all right, but I, you know, it's a slippery slope. So start backing down on that soda, start backing down on those artificials, uh, you know, chemicals that you find in, in these energy drinks. And then number four is uh, another nutrition tip that 
when you step back and take a Forrest Gump approach to it, it's a little bit easier. All the processed foods, so like hamburger helpers and, you know, a lot of pastas are processed. Start eating real foods. Chicken. I know. You're like, chicken, oh, great. Steak. You know, steak, fine. Vegetables, fruits, real sources of good quality calories. Try to avoid a, a lot of the processed foods and processed meats. But I know, like, you know, cost can be a big factor. So, First things first, start removing a lot of those processed foods. Start just eating real things, sweet potatoes, you know, some rice, some, some broccoli. You can have butter on it. That's fine. Um, I like to use a lot of salsa to add taste. I like to use some spices for that. That's fine. But just start eating real foods. And if you don't, if you're like, Sam, I already do eat real foods. Well, then write them down once. Read the ingredients and then see, okay? But those are your basics right there. Set your goal, move consistently, at least three workouts a week, hydrate and eat real food. Start with that right there. And if you've been going and you're like, ah, I'm kind of just undulating and going through, you know, the paces and a little bit of a plateau, set, get back to those basics. Stay consistent with those for a couple of weeks. And then the fifth thing is, you know, repeat this. Repeat, repeat, repeat. It's tough. I know, but repeat. And I noticed I just spelled it wrong on the clicker, but that's fine. Go ahead and comment on it. I hope you're reading it. <laughs> so number one, set your goal. Be honest with yourself. Where am I right now? Where do I really need to be? And then what are the habits that I need to set to get there? The habits are you got to get moving three times a week. You got to hydrate every single day and you got to eat real food. And then we can dig further and further into that. Okay, let's limit sugars. Let's, um, you know, let's start, uh, um, you know, trying to eliminate those sodas and those energy drinks. But start with uh, the basics first and then start to fine tune as you go. All right. But if you're drinking, you know, only 60 ounces of water and you're having four or five energy drinks, that's a, you got to up that water. And then you probably will decrease the energy drinks because you'll be peeing all the time. But you know, that's, that's how you make this. If you're, if you're like, I want to lose 30 pounds, but you're working out one or two times a week, start with getting that third or fourth workout. In. And a workout can be a walk. A workout can be stretching. A workout can be, uh, you know, just some, some active movements and mobility work, things that are building the foundation for you to become stronger, to become more mobile, to become more, um, uh, you know, uh, to, to build your cardiovascular system. So those are the, the building blocks and those are the basics. And where you are right now, if you're in a plateau and you're having that trouble, start, get back to these. If you want to begin, start there. doesn't matter if you're 300 pounds. We have, we've had quite a few people with FRF lose 50 to hundred pounds. And they all say, well, all I did is I went back to what I knew I should have done. And it's not easy. And you're not alone when you struggle with it. And relating this back to the healthy 10, one of the biggest things on the healthy 10, number one, is train functionally three to four times per week consistently. So you need those workouts, not only for your body, but for your brain. I look at number two is hydrate. And then the third is getting your annual medical. Now that might help you with your goal setting. So if you're like, hey, Zam, I'm, I, I need to get my medical done. Well, go do that. And that might help you set your goal. Your doctor may look at you in the eye and go, you're going to be on tons of medications. You're not going to be able to perform on a lot of different fronts. You're going to be diabetic. You need to change your crap up. Literally, you know. And then, you know, the fourth one, eat, eat according to your goals. And that's just basically eat real foods and vegetables. And then, you know, from there, you can focus on sleep because a lot of times what I find when I work with clients and when I coach, they'll, they'll say, you know what? I'm consistent with the workouts. I actually sleep a lot better. I got rid of those energy drinks and I'm able to sleep a lot better. And I wind up after a while because I'm hydrating and I have more energy throughout the day. And then, you know, all these other things start to fall into place. You know, some of these are habitual things that you do when you're at work, you know, cleaning your gear, wearing your SCBA working on your emotional resilience. And I think sometimes we don't wear our SCBA because we're, we're not in shape enough. 
So when you have energy and you're more in shape, you're more likely to wear your SCBA, which protects you from all the other things. Um, you know, so all of the, these parts of the healthy 10 kind of build on each other and you need to start at the top, work your way through. There's some of them that you can do and check off, but I think they all kind of interplay and, and it's a process all the way through your career. It's going to be, there's going to be challenges and there's going to be times where you're just flying, but, um, you're not alone again. And this is the fourth time I said that look around, uh, and, and ask your crew members to do some stuff with you. Um, you know, number 10, uh, get better every shift. And that's just about trying to improve yourself mentally, physically, having a good attitude. And sometimes, you know, taking five or 10 minutes a day as part of your workout, you know, when you're on that walk, you take a couple deep breaths, you look around and you go, okay, I'm making progress. I'm, this is a good thing. Um, so use the fundamentals to build on the healthy tent. And before you know it, that healthy tent is just part of your every, every year, every shift. It's your mindset and it's part of your lifestyle. And that's the goal behind it is, you know, you could start with one or two things and just keep building on them. And there's times where you're going to be stagnant, but it, when you are just fall forward just a little bit. And if you're looking for something to build on, you know, grab some water, hydrate enough and build on that to the next day and say, okay, I'm going to get some work, uh, workout in. And I ate like crap. So to, you know, tomorrow's a new day. And there's other tools that you can use, right? You can talk about fasting. We can talk about macros. We can talk about, you know, all these different supplements. But if you don't have these fundamentals in place, it does not matter. Focus on these fundamentals first. Once you're getting established with them, then listen to some of the other podcasts where we talk about supplements or, or you know, um, you know, macros and, and certain, you know, grams of protein, whatever it might be. All right. So start with the basics. And if you're looking for help on the basics, we have a challenge that's live. It's called the Better Every Shift Challenge. You get access to three FRF programs. You um, actually are joining a challenge where other fire service leaders are joining. Uh, you'll probably see some, hopefully see some stuff posted about that fairly quickly. I just did another podcast with, had a crazy week, did some stuff with some really cool people and leaders of the fire service. I'll try to link to that uh, within the show notes also. And then, um, Proceeds from this uh, challenge go to FRCE, which is First Responder Center for Excellence, uh, Firefighter Cancer Support Network, the Science Alliance with Dr. Dr. Sarah Jenke. You also get a coin with this. You get coaching, and you're going to help really change the fitness culture of the fire service. It's uh, something that, you know, the three programs, one is a 40-day resiliency challenge where you just build fundamental habits. Another one is a metabolic workout that'll help you lose fat. Another one is the ultimate athlete that'll help you build strength. That'll take you all the way through the year. All right. So join this challenge. If you're looking for motivation, if you want to do it on your own, fine. If you have other programs, fine. You can still join the challenge and just, um, you know, participate in the chat and, and motivating each other, but get back to basics. Everybody look at the healthy 10. Let me know what, what you think we need to add to that healthy 10. Back to the fundamentals, back to the basics, work on your free throws, right? Stuff like that. Um, hydrate, look in the mirror, set your goal, figure out where you want to go, create the habits, get moving, get hydrating, eat real foods. Keep listening to the, uh, FRF podcast. And also, uh, you can hear me on the better every shift podcast. You can see me on YouTube, fire rescue fitness. Most importantly, just reach out. If you have a question, if you're struggling, send me a message on social media or send a message via a contact me page at firerescuefitness.com. I try to get back to everybody within 24 hours. Sometimes I'm at shift and I can't, but, um, you know, you're not alone with any of this. And, um, I really would love to help you. Uh, I hope you can motivate your crew. I hope you can get on board and I hope you just, uh, improve your health using the framework of the healthy tent. So again, thanks for listening, everybody get FRF, everybody stay safe. We'll talk soon.